we go. Welcome to a new chapter. We're going to start looking at some uh, non-real numbers here. Pretty crazy. We're going to start with imaginary numbers. This is Mr. Bruss. We're going to uh, rock and roll some imaginary numbers to start things off. Just like this nice little boy here with his imaginary friend. Adorable. Reminds me of Mr. Kelly as a kid. Uh, let's get rolling. So let's do a quick review. We've done real solutions. We've had real answers. This is a quick review. If I graph this, so uh, the function is x squared minus 4. It's this nice parabola here. And I can see it hits here and here. So these, remember, are x intercepts x-intercepts are our roots, or if we were solving the equation x squared minus 4 equals 0, we had a couple different ways we could do it. We could add 4 to both sides if we wanted to and get the x squared by itself, so it was x squared equals 4. And I know a lot of you guys are just looking at me, Mr. Bruss, I know the answer. I know, but I'm just showing you to kind of get us going into the new stuff here. Uh, square root both sides, and what do I get? Uh, this turns into x, this turns into plus or minus, the square root of 4 is 2. So it could be a positive 2 or a negative 2. Makes sense. Here's the positive 2, here's the negative 2. Some people may have looked at this and said, oh yeah, x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. It's x plus 2, x minus 2, and if I set it equal to 0, I know my solutions are 2 and negative 2. They're both right. They're both cool. I just want to make sure that you are good to go. We've done that for the last couple chapters. Should be pretty solid that the x-intercepts are the roots, are the solutions, all the same stuff. So what in the world does that have to do with imaginary numbers? Well, it turns out we can have imaginary solutions. So what in the world does that mean? What if you tried to solve this? Well, I can look at the graph and say, oh, man, Mr. Bruss, that does not cross the x-intercept. It doesn't cross, so it doesn't have any answers. True that. I agree with you on that. But we can still solve this algebraically. x squared plus 4 equals 0. So let's just go ahead and try to solve this bad boy, just like we did the last one. And what happens here? So I'm going to subtract 4 this time from both sides. And now I get x squared equals negative 4. What in the world is wrong with this? Well, we've been told forever, can't take the square root of a negative, can we? Like, that's what I want to do. I want to get x by itself. I need to square root both sides. And what would that be? Well, that would be plus or minus the square root of negative 4. And we've been told that doesn't exist. True, it doesn't exist. It's imaginary. This doesn't cross, but it has imaginary solutions. So how in the world are we going to get around this? Well, we have a solution, luckily for us. You can still say, what is the square root of negative 4? It is actually 2i. And there it is. That is the imaginary number. There is i right there. We're going to start using that. So you probably ask yourself, uh, well, what in the world does that mean? Well, let's do a couple. So if we think about real numbers here, square root of 36 is what? Remember, that just means what number times itself. So 6 times 6 is 36. So I know that. That's easy peasy. That's real numbers. But if I have negative 5, so I'm looking for some number times some number is negative 25. Well, yeah, sure. When I first start, I'm going to say, okay, yeah, it's got to be what? Uh, 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. So that makes sense to me. It's got to be 5 times 5. But the problem is how do I get that negative in front? I can't make them both negative. That give me a positive. They're both positive and positive, and it's got to be the same number. So what do we do? We actually say it's 5i times 5i. So we're going to say 5i times 5i is what? It actually is going to be 25i squared. So that makes sense. So what is i squared really equal to then? We'll check it out. i squared is really this negative 1 in front here. It's this negative sign. So that is what an imaginary number is. It is i squared. And that makes sense. So what number times itself is negative 25? It is actually 5i. That is the actual square root of a negative. So look at that. Learn something new today. You can actually take the square root of negatives. It's just an imaginary answer. That's why 2i times 2i is negative 4. Totally legit. It's an imaginary number. That is crazy. So let's just play around with some imaginary numbers for a while. Uh, and I have i here. So imaginary numbers, so let's jot this down. i is i. That just means the imaginary number. i squared was the key here. That's the most important thing by far. you got to know it. Circle it. Star it. Draw a box around it. i times i is i squared, which is negative 1. That's the key to this whole thing. That's why it works right there. Now, if I'm trying to find i cubed, what is i cubed really? Well, it's just a matter of saying i squared times i. Like that is i cubed, right? i squared times i is i cubed. So what is i squared really? Here's the key. Remember, this is so huge. I'm going to box it. So huge. i squared is negative 1. That's what I, the whole takeaway from this. So it's negative 1 times i. So this is actually negative i. If I do i to the fourth, well, what is i to the fourth? i to the fourth is really i squared, not plus, Mr. Bruss. Let's try it again. i squared times i squared. Isn't that i to the fourth? You add the exponents. And what is negative i? It's really negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Holy cow. So I can do different powers of i now. Uh, so let's try i to the 5. i to the 5, i to the 5th, sorry. i to the 5th is really what? i to the 4th times i to the 1, or i to the 1st. 
And what do I know about i to the fourth? Oh, it's one, isn't it? So this is just one times i, which is just i. Interesting. How about i to the sixth? It is also i to the fourth times i squared. So i to the fourth, remember, is one. What is i squared? It's negative one. This is just back to negative one. So if you look at this, i to the fifth is the same thing as i. i to the sixth is i squared. i to the seventh will become i cubed. i to the eighth is i to the fourth. It's just this cycle here. So this just keeps repeating. This pattern right here starts repeating uh, back to where it started. So this is a cycle of four. Everything is a cycle of four. So for example, i to the sixth is one cycle of four, and then you had two left over to get to that sixth. That's i squared. So it's the same as i squared that negative one. Holy cow, that's a lot. Let's try another one. i to the 15th. Well, think about it. How many cycles of four to get to 15? Well, I go uh, one cycle of four is four, then eight, then 12. So I get to 12 with a remainder of what? Three. So this is the same as i cubed. Is that crazy? I know I just said it out loud. So if you have me on mute, that's a huge bummer uh, because you're going to miss out on what I just did there. You'd be like, what? <laughs> so i cubed is really negative i. Let's write this down. Not that you should ever mute Mr. Brust. Uh, but if I'm going to do this, really I'm going to say, hey, 34, how many cycles of 4 are in 34? So how many cycles of 4? Well, how many times does 4 go into 34? It goes in there 8 times, right? And I don't really care about how many cycles. I care about the remainder. It goes in there 32 times with a, what? A remainder of 2. That's the key. The remainder is your power. So that's i squared. Once I know the power, i squared is negative 1. So you definitely got to memorize i squared is negative 1. Then you can build these from there or just kind of memorize there, but all you need is this cycle of 4. What happens if it, uh, let's add another example. I know it's not in there. Let's, what happens if it breaks down evenly, like i to the 40? Well, it goes in there 10 times, 4 cycles of 10, right? It's a remainder of 0. If it's a remainder of 0, it just means it goes in there evenly 4 times, or i to the 4th, which is just plain 1. So don't freak out if you get that. Practice those. If it's not making sense, man, I'll, I'll make up 100 of these or go to the corrective and do a couple of those. Uh, just cycles of four. Awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some uh, operations on these things and see, hey, is my answer real or imaginary? So why are, you may be thinking, why are imaginary number of importance? I always think of things that don't exist, kind of like Mr. Bean in his Twitter account, all his followers. Um, imaginary. His imaginary followers. I don't think nobody follows this guy. And look at that. Who would? That's a, that's a garbage. Uh, so can I break down the square root of negative 40? Uh, sure. What is this going to be? So this is pretty crazy here. So this is going to be I radical 40. Now, why is that? So you may be asking, well, why is that? Well, it really is 40 I squared. Remember that I squared is negative 1, so it gives me the negative 40. So this is the same. And then Mr. Sullivan said, what are we allowed to do? Uh, we're allowed to say we can take the, the square out of this. So we can square root the squared, and the I comes out front. Pretty cool. Am I finished? No, not quite. 40 breaks down. So I got to do a little bit more cleanup here. So this is really radical 4 times radical 10. And that is the i is still out front. And then what's the square root of 4? It is just 2. So this becomes 2i radical 10. Is that a lot? Uh, that's some good stuff. Let's add another example. Before I go over here, what if I just said, hey, what's the square root of negative 16? Square root of negative 16 is just what? What number times itself? You can think of it as 16i squared. That's that negative 1. And then when I square root this, what do I get? I just get plain old 4i. So I kind of skip this step. If I know it, I just go straight to this because um, I have it right there. Let's get Mr. Bean out of here. We don't need that comment. Oh, where are you? Get out of here. What are you doing? Okay. So uh, were these real or imaginary? These are definitely both imaginary examples. Anytime it has the i in it, these are imaginary numbers here. So is this one real or imaginary? First, got to clean it up. So 3i times 3i is 15i squared. And remember, what is i squared? It is negative 1. So this is 15 times negative 1, which is negative 15. Is that real or imaginary? That is actually real right there. That is a real number. There's nothing imaginary about it. Excellent. How about the next one? i cubed plus 3i? Well, check it out. I can't add these because they're not the same power, but what is i cubed? i cubed, if I look at my chart, is really negative i. So that's negative i. And then I'm going to add it to this 3i. So can I add these? Sure. Negative 1i plus 3i is 2i. Boom. There it is. Is that real or imaginary? It's imaginary. It's got the i in it, so it's imaginary. Awesome. All right, let's solve some equations with this now. So now we're going to use imaginary numbers to kind of solve some equations. So it's just like everything we've been doing. Try to get the variable by itself. So in like this case, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. So you go 18 divided by negative 2 is negative 9. 
these cancel out, which we want. Now we're down to n squared. So all we're doing is add a couple little steps here. What am I going to do to solve this? Well, I'm going to square root both sides. So remember, the second you introduce a square root, when you actually draw it by hand, it becomes plus or minus. So this is plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Now we've been told, okay, we can't take the square root of negative 9. But remember, this is like saying plus or minus the square root. Take the i out of 9. Now we're cool. We can take that i out. And then what is the square root of 9? It is 3i. So maybe we went straight to 3i. Totally cool. I'm totally down with that. It's plus or minus 3i. So I introduced the radical. That's why I get that plus or minus out front. And this is an imaginary number, just like what else is imaginary? The, ooh, check this out. It's supposed to be not the abominable snowman, the abenable, abenable? Abenable snowman? Something like that. I don't know. I was trying to think of imaginary things to go with my imaginary answer. Abenable snowman. All right, how about if I solve this bad boy up here? Uh, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. Subtract 1 from both sides, so I get x squared equals a negative 7, and here I am. So that stuff's old. This is the new part. Now I square root both sides. So again, as soon as I square root it, I'm looking at plus or minus every time. Because it's a negative, I'm going to take an i out, and it's going to be the square root of 7. Do I know the square root of 7? No. Does it reduce? No. I'm done. That is it. It looks crazy, but that's it. We also like the i in front because if you put it after, it kind of looks like it's under the square root. So this i is always out front. It's an imaginary number. So I radical 7 times I radical 7 is that negative 7 inside. Pretty cool. What else is imaginary like that that's pretty cool? Uh, how about a leprechelicon? Oh, Mr. Kelly is a leprechaun. Look at that. Amazing. All right, let's stretch. All right, here we go. One more of these try to get Y squared by itself, so I'm just going to get, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Remember, you have to add this negative 56. I left it blank. Just make sure uh, you're with me in the notes here. Not that you wouldn't be. Uh, negative 56 plus that 2 is negative 54. What am I going to do now? Divide both sides by 3. So I'm just working to get that y squared by itself, just like we did before in chapter 4. Boom, I get negative 18 here. Only difference now is this is a negative number, so I'm going to square root it. And I need, again, boom, instantly, plus or minus. You've got to do the plus or minus. I'll kill you if you leave that off. So plus or minus square root of this. So I'm going to say it's plus or minus i radical 18. Take that negative out so that i comes out. Does 18 break down? In this case, it does. Remember, this is what? 9 times 2. So I still have the i out front. It's still plus or minus. And then what is the square root of 9? It is 3. So that is my answer. It looks crazy, but don't freak out. It's just, a, it's just an imaginary number. It's plus or minus uh, 3i radical 2. So 3 times i times radical 2. Pretty cool. Do I have an imaginary creature for that? For Mr. Sullivan? You know I do. It's not a Sasquatch. It's a Sully Squatch. Ooh, that one looks too real. Too real. Uh, the, all right, moving on to the next one. Let's solve some of these bad boys. So these are a little bit trickier because I'm adding a step. So right off the bat, I can't add or subtract anything. I got to get in by itself so it's stuck in here. So I can square root right off the bat. Boom. Square root both sides. As soon as you do that, it's plus or minus. So it's plus or minus the square root of negative 25. Those square roots cancel. I'm left with n minus 1. Then I'm going to say, hey, what is the square root of negative 25? I now know it's 5i. Oops. Let's try that again. It can go straight to 5i. 5i times 5i is that. And now here's the weird part. What am I going to do here? I've got this n minus 1, so I'm going to plus 1 both sides, plus 1 both sides. So you can write plus or minus 5i plus 1. Totally legit. That's fine. That is the answer. But really, we're going to put the real number first. 1 is a real number, so it's going to go first plus or minus. Hey, that was a terrible plus or minus. Let's try again. Plus or minus 5i. Excellent. And remember this plus or minus, it really means you have two answers. One plus 5i and one minus 5i. We're just streamlining the process and saying one plus or minus 5i. But it really means you have two answers. These are not uh, imaginary numbers now. They're part imaginary. You got the 5i, which is imaginary. You got this part, which is real. It's different. We're going to save that for next section. We can still get these answers, but it's not fully imaginary. It's only half imaginary. So I'm not going to put a picture up there of any weird math teachers. Uh, can I solve the next one? Sure thing, man. You're going to say I need to get this by itself. So go ahead and subtract your 8 from both sides. And you get x plus 3 squared equals negative 2. And what am I going to do to both sides to get rid of that square? I'm going to undo it. I'm going to square root both sides. So boom. That's cool. It cancels out my square. So I got x plus 3. And then what happens here? Plus or minus, the i is going to come right on out, and I'm going to say leave the radical 2 in there. Leave the, the 2 inside. So I took the i out. Hey, 2 doesn't break down. That's it. That, that is it. It doesn't simplify. That's cool. And what i got to do here? I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So subtract your 3 from both sides. 
Again, I'm going to put that real number first. It's going to be negative 3 plus or minus i radical 2. I know these look terrible. Don't freak out. It's okay. Uh, it's going to look something like this. That is the answer. That is the solution. So we're solving these bad boys. Um, awesome. One more of these. So this one's got a lot of stuff going on here, but I want to get the, the parentheses by itself. So go ahead and subtract your 7 to start. Subtract your 7 to start. Boom, that's gone. So I've got 1 third. And then I've got this y plus 2 squared equals what? Negative 8. Now, how do I get rid of that 1 third in front? Sure, I'm going to just times both sides by 3. Times both by, sides by 3. I can't talk. And that'll be y plus 2. All of that is squared equals negative 24. And now here's the big step. we got to square root both sides. I'm going to kind of scroll down a little bit if that's cool uh, to get this. So I'm going to scroll down, square root both sides. So these cancel. That was the whole point of doing that. They cancel. I'm left with y plus 2. Since I took a square root instantly, plus or minus every time, i comes out, so I'm going to take that i out, and I'm going to say 24. So I'm kind of skipping that step of writing i squared and taking it out. Uh, I think we do so many of these, you kind of get that going on. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish this out, subtract the 2. You may notice 24 breaks down, but don't worry about it yet. Let's wait till the very end. Don't worry about that yet. So I'm going to say negative 2 plus or minus i square root 24. Now... Can I simplify? So now I'm ready. Does square root of 24 break down? Sure, it breaks down into what? 4 times 6. So the i is still out front. It's still plus or minus. It's still negative 2. And the whole reason we did that was say negative 2 plus or minus. Uh, square root of 4 is 2. That's 2i radical 6. There it is right there. There is your solution. y equals that bad boy right there. We now know how to do imaginary numbers. Practice these bad boys. Good luck on the match check. Peace out.